Um, but this is the favorite clip of obviously the whole Brent, sorry, the whole um, Joe Rogan, um, Louis C.K. podcast. The favorite one everyone's been talking about is this really tense back and forth between Joe Rogan and Louis C.K. about cold plunges, about saunas and cold plunges. And Louis C.K. clearly doesn't agree with Joe Rogan that, you know, the, the key to life is having a sauna and getting into a cold plunge. And it's hilarious to me because I remember one of the reasons or one of the things that made me laugh during the pandemic was Joe Rogan's insistence that he wasn't getting sick because he was doing kettlebell swings and he was jumping in flipping uh, cold plunges. Like he legitimately was holding on to that. That was his thing. Like that's why he's not getting sick. And of course, he still got flipping COVID, even though he was taking ivermectin and all this sort of stuff. But he's he's got this thing in his head where he believes that exercise cures everything if you're suffering from depression if you're suicidal ex do a couple burpees and you'll be fine i know it works for some people but other people you know they've, they've, they've got their issues they have to deal with and no amount of exercise or running 5ks or doing iron man is going to change it but he's very rigid in that point of view and now he's got this new this one say it's a new thing but it's the thing that he's always preaching about saunas and cold plunges he sees the benefits it gives to him but the thing that really is weird about joe is that he makes the the cold plunges and the saunas like i think he speaks about it like it's like him conquering something he doesn't really have any hardships in his life everything is nice and easy he thinks putting himself in a position of jumping into a cold plunge or doing the sauna for ages and being really hot is his way of recreating working on a flipping building site somewhere or working in a busy kitchen um you know of a flipping i don't know wendy's or whatever they call right that's what he thinks it is doing that kind of horrible labor those kind of jobs he's recreating it with a son and a cobalt which is absolutely redacted in a slight in the highest degree but when you're rich and you're out of touch and you're a little bit in the in the clouds you can maybe have those kind of points of view and louis ck clearly doesn't agree with it. and i think this exchange was absolutely incredible yes yoshi big up big up yoshi I have these long conversations about what's the right way to think and what's you know what's the right way to live and all these many, many boutique things of here's how to feel better. Yeah. Because we're just kind of sitting around. We're just consumers. We're just consumers of the mm -hmm. rest of the world. So I was watching this video where these guys were talking about Lex Fried. Let's quick stop. You know what? Uche, I, I, Uche, I can't accept that. I, I think Huberman, I think is the one that I allow because Huberman to me is like the male version Who's that female scientist that comes on Joe Rogan a lot? She kind of looks like um, a cute bunny rabbit. Um, what's her name? She's really good in terms of uh, science and medical and human optimization, all that kind of stuff. She's really awesome. I think Huberman's the same thing. He comes at it from a very scientific point of view, almost autistic point of view. He's got a little bit of autism there in his detail. And it's also very practical, the stuff that he gives people. It's never things that are really highfalutin or only... Yeah, that's it, Rhonda Patrick. That's it. Huberman reminds me a lot of Rhonda Patrick in his ability. He's not pseudoscience. He's not woo-woo. He's not... No, he's not Aubrey. That's Aubrey Marcus, not Coiler. No, no, no. Aubrey Marcus is woo-woo. He's the guy that's telling you to hug your wife and do tantric sex and stuff and get healed by the sun and all that sort of nonsense. No, no, no. Not that guy. Um, Huberman's more so scientific and methodical in his approach and the things that he gives out advice are i guess a lot more relatable and easy to digest like i've got a lot of learnings from his little things he did on drugs and alcohol and how that affects you i got a lot of learnings from his stuff he did about sleep i learned a lot from that i don't but i don't think he's too far in the clouds um which has been really nice and i hope he doesn't you know lose that because that's the one thing that i like about him he is kind of grounded he doesn't, you know, enjoy the smell of his own farts and he gets experts in and shit. I don't know. I like him. I like him. I'm a fan of him. But I understand what you mean, but I like Huberman. I actually enjoy his content a lot. So I hope he doesn't, you know, go the path of Jordan Peterson and stuff or Bert, or Brett Weinstein. I mean, hopefully he just settles down and he's okay how he is. Hopefully, hopefully. Ben and Andrew Huberman were talking about uh, saunas and cold plunges and stuff yeah. like that and, like, the benefits of it. They're just – they're two scientists. Yeah. They're, they're talking about the, the – the, Provable benefits, heat shock proteins, cold shock proteins. And then I read in the comments mm. where some guy was like, yeah, well, you, you guys aren't talking about us how much it costs to mm. buy a sauna. You're it's making true. it seem like it's all free. And like, like mm. what is what is true, though? I, Joe, Joe Rogan can't understand the play. This is the thing that I really want to stress as well. One of Joe Rogan's superpowers and one of the things I liked about him always has been his ability to seem somewhat like a regular dude, even though he's been a multimillionaire for more than two decades his entire for the majority of he's been richer than he's he's been richer longer than he's been poorer in his life right i know he grew up kind of middle class and regular but he's been richer for way longer in his life than he's been poor 
but I always admired his ability to seem somewhat normal and chill, like the chill rich guy, right? Similar to Elon Musk in the beginning. Elon Musk in the beginning was the somewhat chill and cool, smart dude. Then he started to get too much attention on social media, started to enjoy it, and he went a bit crazy, and now he's doing whatever he's doing. But Joe Rogan always maintained the ability to be somewhat normal, even though he's a multi, multi-millionaire, even before Spotify. Probably now with Spotify, he might be approaching billionaire status, but he's always remained that way. But one thing I've noticed about Joe Rogan over the years is that he's become way more um removed from reality way more wrapped up in his own world and unable to relate to the common man really and truly like at his funk at its core he's unreal unable to relate to the common man like i guess if you ask him about the price of milk he'd have no idea what it is the price of eggs no idea what it is um how difficult it you know he'd probably be telling you to get a tesla even though you can't afford to buy a petrol you know gas gasoline car like all these kind of things he doesn't understand the the concept that you know maybe 30k for a tesla is still 30k that somebody doesn't have <laughs> you know what i mean so the idea of going out and buying a cold plunge and putting it in your garden that you don't have if you live in apartment blocks where you put in that cold plunge where you put in that sauna um how much does it cost you to go to his place he doesn't factor it into a regular person's wage and i think he says the same thing about office people he's got this real axe to grind against people that work nine to five in offices because i guess maybe he had a bad experience himself but he thinks everybody could just get up tomorrow and start their business and quit their jobs he doesn't understand the concept that some people maybe enjoy their jobs some people may have obligations that don't allow them to pursue their quote-unquote passion some people can't just start making knives and selling those on etsy it's a thing that he doesn't really wrap his head around too much and again it's okay because he's a guy in his 50s and he spent a large chunk of his career being rich but he doesn't have that ability to comprehend that the regular person is just literally literally trying to survive day by day trying to make sure they've got enough food on the plate to eat trying to make sure they've got enough electricity to kind of keep them warm and keep the lights on and pay the wi-fi bill whatever it may be the concept of going out and buying a, a cold plunge to sit in and to reset yourself and whatnot and heat shock proteins and shit is way way over there do you know what I mean? But he doesn't get it for some reason. It's the only thing that's a bit disappointing about him. What are you supposed to do? Like, you every fucking thing? Like, I'm sorry <laughs> if you're broke. Oh, no, you have but, the conversation for right. people that can live that way. Well, I mean, not just... But it's just fun. It's, 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 but it's, it's not... An in, it's not impossible to achieve. We're not talking about yeah. buying a fucking Lamborghini. Yeah, but well, I'm not... Comparing... For regular people, buying a cold plunge or a sauna and putting it in your garden... And maintaining it is equivalent to buying a Lamborghini. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is. <laughs> if you're surviving as a receptionist working for a flipping marketing firm and you're getting paid 30000 a year and you have two kids, you have no money to buy the cold plunge or the sauna, even if you wanted to. <laughs> you know what I mean? You literally have none. <laughs> so the idea that this is somewhat approachable is absolutely hilarious. And that comparison speaks wonders saying that there's something wrong with talking about that stuff because other people can't afford it that's not at all what i'm saying what i'm saying is that it's actually part of why people are miserable is because they're actually it's a ridiculous conversation <laughs> it's a ridiculous it's not like the way the the earth and the experience of like competing for food and oxygen and living in the, on earth you know and living in society and just being a person <laughs> living on earth you know <laughs> he's telling him you don't live on earth you live in the clouds you're in some other planet you're on mars with flipping elon musk talking about the flipping what you call it, the public square and all that sort of nonsense and arguing with people to pay eight dollars for a blue tick we've got to some altitude here where we're having some stupid conversations that are just <laughs> yeah. you know should i do a cold plunger of sauna like what the fuck is that it's not that like it's not you should be ashamed because people can't afford it i feel sorry for the guy in that conversation it's like it's a ridiculous trying to find just the right balance because there's nothing really challenging you because you're not you don't have any real problems and you're not you're not on the earth you're not staying that's the case he doesn't have any real problems and joe rogan thinks you know adapt or you know absorbing these issues putting these artificial roadblocks in front of him is kind of a weird real problem it's like that time when he started running and using five finger toe shoes because it hurt his feet more and it was more challenging basically just you know these artificial obstacles he's throwing, again it's somewhat commendable because these artificial obstacles he's throwing in front of himself so what basically keeps him somewhat centered because even know he's a little bit you know lacking in self-awareness and a little bit detached from reality joe is still probably the coolest rich guy that we know in media right in terms of his level he's still a little bit chill but you know he's still trying to throw these artificial roadblocks in front of him 
and trying to make his life more difficult than what it is because life is pretty sweet with your Joe Rogan. It legitimately is. Standing on the earth anymore. You're in a, bu- in a bubble. And that's a good thing also because he's worked hard for it. Like, you know, enjoy your sweet life, but let's just relax with the recommending cold plunges for a, a single mom of two. Where you sort of like, maybe I'll try this and maybe I'll just do protein now and I'll do, you know what I mean? It's... <laughs> And you'll never find a balance because life does. That's not a normal life. Exactly. That's not organic living. That's not living like a human being. You know, <laughs> you don't have a, <laughs> a choice because, I mean, but you have what a are you going to do? Be poor but you have a- this is similar to like Rick Glassman on TFK. This is similar to that kind of vibe. Similar vibes. He's kind of mocking, but he isn't. Yeah, it's really hilarious. But to be fair, they're both having different conversations anyway, in general. They're both having different conversations. To be fair to Joe. A physical body. And if yeah. you have a physical body... Then- Look at Joe's got that face. Like, come on, dude. He's got that come on, dude's face. So he's a little bit... He's rolling his head, his eyes and his head. There's things that are beneficial to your physical body. Sure. And if you choose to do those things, you'll have a better body. It'll work better. And if you choose not to do those things because you think they're ridiculous, so do you think, like, no, oh, that's just not that organic that living. That's not life. Yeah. This is, this is uh-huh. not life. It is life. It's life. And people have invented shoes. The reason why they invented shoes is because rocks <laughs> will cut your feet. Yeah. So they figured out... Equating, sh- again, this is, Jorgen's, Jorgen's examples are horrible. Equating, uh, um, you know, buying a sauna or comparing buying a sauna to a Lamborghini, horrible. Comparing the necessity of having a cold plunge to wearing shoes, horrendous. <laughs> show me if you can buy a pair of shoes for, show me where you can buy a cold plunge for $5, right? Because you could buy shoes for a flip, literally five dollars, or get them for free if need be, and then people will probably have them more often. Or show me more people that have spaces where they can put a cold plunge in the first place. Like, where are these spaces? Where are all these people that have places with gardens and places to put things in? Come on, man. But shoes, shoes are right. better than no shoes, right? Uh-huh. Getting in a sauna and getting in a cold plunge is better for the physical body than not doing it. Yeah, it's the same thing. Lifting weights is better than not lifting weights because then you develop a strong body and don't lose your bone density. All true. Like all these things are a part of life. You can just yeah. decide they're not they're organic. They're a part of life when you're when you've removed yourself from the food chain and from real life. <laughs> they- I love it. It's like when he was always talking about but getting elk meat. But you know what's funny that he says that he says about the food. It's like I used to live in a food desert, or that's where I'm from. Well, equivalent to a food desert in you know in parts of London, we have very horrible and deprived areas, which again. It's funny growing up in poverty. I never know. I never knew I grew up in poverty until I started going to university. I saw I started to go to art college and I started to travel the world and stuff. And so I realized, oh shit, I grew up kind of poor in it. So the area that I grew up in is really messed up area called Canning Town and Custom House, which is a bit nicer nowadays, a little bit of gentrification. But it was a little bit of a food desert because the only shops we had near us to eat were fast food restaurants and not like Burger King KFC which they were in some areas but mostly like hood chicken shops Indian stores Chinese stores so along the whole strip of where I used to live there'd be a line of shops of betting shops and fast food joints that's all it was chicken shops where you could get like a box of chicken 10 wings and fries for two pounds and a drink right two dollars will get you 10 wings chips and a drink and that's what you'd be eating all the time so you don't have much money and you wanted your food to kind of stretch quote unquote so you'd be buying this food for cheap and it would be made for you and stuff and eating it every single day horrible high in cholesterol using you know loads of flipping seed oils and all that stuff being bad for the environment being bad for your insides you're drinking fizzy drinks you're betting in a betting shop like horrible 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 set of living but it was only because of the area you were from there was no ability to get fresh produce really the freshest produce you could get was from a local bodega off license and you know it's not exactly fresh the stuff you're buying there the butchers you're buying the stuff from the meat isn't grass-fed or anything in the slightest it just is what it is so you're kind of limited to your choices of what you can eat and put in your body to keep yourself you know fed and healthy and stuff so you have to make to compromise it so someone comes up to you and says are you on keto or whatnot what is keto you're just trying to survive and live every day there is no ability to be keto to be atkins to do slow carb to do you know um protein meat only it doesn't exist it doesn't exist so this whole notion that everybody can you know do these things is just ridiculous and in the extreme but obviously don't talk you don't need to stop talking about it but it's just decided that everyone can do it it's funny it kind of relates a little bit back to the tom segura rant because i get what tom segura was saying you know like if i'm rich and i have all these nice things i should be able to talk about it without feeling guilty that you don't have them cool but 
it was just his tinge of like you're you're broke because you decided you're broke it's like uh, not really you know some people just don't have any options out of what they're in the situations they're in require them to put all their efforts into making sure the lights are on they can't really pursue anything outside of that in the current moment they're in maybe because of family maybe because of responsibility maybe because of where they're from education all those things wrapped into one but again I can, I can understand it in similar but i can get it in some respect because i think a lot of these guys have this kind of pull yourself up by the bootstraps thing going on and i think they have a lot of um selection bias or sex i don't know is it selection bias i think the term is called where because they've made it and because they're humans and because they're like you and i they're breathing a shit and piss like we do they think because they can do it you can do it also and if you can't do it they can't wrap their head around it because they said look i did it they've got that kind of weird way of thinking and really life is more complex than that and random some people just can't do it because they don't have the means they don't have the intelligence the wearable the passion all these sort of things come into it societal things pressures fam familial blah 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 it's a lot more complex than just pull yourself up by your bootstraps it's a lot more layered and nuanced and shit of course it's not your problem everyone's got their issues but i understand from the comedian side of things why they can get annoyed by it because in their heads they're just regular guys I can understand from the fans' point of view, seeing a comedian who was funny when he was doing his podcast in his bedroom, and now suddenly he's got a studio with, you know, a whole team behind him, and now he's telling you to shut up because you're broke. I can get both sides of it. <laughs> I can get it. I can definitely get it. But yeah, I thought that Lucy K appearance was so good, man. So, 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 so good.